Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level programmer or machine learning engineer, it honestly doesn't matter. This is going to be the tutorial for you. This is not very long at all, literally going to be a few minutes of your day. And this is going to give you a more nuanced understanding or even a full understanding as to how simple neural networks work and the basics of training in PyTorch. So uh, if you end up enjoying this video, feel free to subscribe. It's totally free. You can unsubscribe later if you want to. But yeah, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So in order to actually build this neural network, we're going to need to open up our text editor first. So I'm going to go CMD and I'm going to CD into my or change directories, which CD stands for, into my uh, Python testing directory. Uh, and then we're just going to make a new directory. We're going to call it neural network one minute. It's going to be longer than one minute, maybe, but uh, we'll just go ahead and create that. And then next up, we're going to just CD into it, change directory into it. And then I'm going to install uh, a certain package or library called PyTorch. So we're going to go pip install torch, just like that. And this is assuming that you have Python installed on your computer. So as you can see, requirement is already satisfied for me. It might just take a little while for you if you don't already have it. And then from this point on, we can go ahead and enter uh, VS Code. So let me just pull this over. I'm gonna make a new file called main.py and we're gonna go ahead and import uh, PyTorch, the framework that we're gonna be using to build this neural network. We're gonna go import torch and then import torch.nn and it's just a sort of a subset of the torch which involves uh, more closely tied to the neural network framework where you are using model parameters. Anyways, I'm not going to jump into the technical stuff about that. We'll just uh, follow along as is. Uh, and then next up, I'm going to, we actually need to import another one. It's called uh, torch.optim. This is going to be our optimizer. So what do we do next? Well, I'm going to go ahead and paste this uh, model class in here and I'll show you what this does step by step. So we have a model class that derives from nn.module as we saw in here. So this is the, the module that PyTorch uses to keep track of all of the parameters that we have. Parameters mean the weights and biases of the model. So oftentimes when we have a, a simple model like what we're going to build right now, you'll have some input. Uh, X, you'll have a weight W and a bias, uh, you'll have a bias B. So the formula that we're going to refer to is Y, the output is equal to the weight times the input plus a bias. And these, this W and B here are just those model parameters. So essentially an dot module is just going to be keeping track of those and updating them when it needs to. So awesome. What's actually going on in here? So we have an init or a constructor, and essentially what this does is it just, in this, in this little constructor, we're able to initialize our parameters. So we don't actually do anything with them, we just let them exist and just sort of let them sit there and have a little way of calling them. So this self.linear here, awesome. And then this forward method, this is our forward pass. So when we call forward, it's essentially going to go through the neural network and go from an input to an output. That's what this is. This little linear layer is doing that y equals wx plus b, the weight times input plus bias. That's what this is doing. So we get an input, we apply a linear transformation to it, and we get an output, and then we return this. Awesome. Now let's go into the next step here. So next up, we're going to create a uh, model instance. So we're just going to use this this model and we're just going to set this to a variable. So we're going to create an instance of model. And then we're going to import, or we're not going to import, I'm going to import because it's on a different screen for me. But uh, this is this is how we get our loss. So the loss will essentially compare uh, the output that we received based on what was calculated compared to our desired output. So what did we get? What did we predict? and what do we want? And then what's the difference between those? How close are they together? And then we can calculate the prediction accuracy of the model. So that's our loss. And this is just MSE loss or mean squared error loss. You can look more into that if you'd like to, but 
uh, this is how we get to our loss or prediction accuracy. Cool. Next up, I have this optimizer. So this is what's actually going to update our model parameters. You'll see that we use optim from torch.optim and we use SGD. This is stochastic gradient descent. So you might ask, what does gradient descent exactly do? Well, gradient descent, you can think of it as a bell curve. So you can think of it like one of these, a bell curve. We start at the top and our goal is to get to the bottom. The higher the loss is, the worse the model is. And the lower the loss, the better the model is. So all stochastic gradient descent is doing is it's optimizing our parameters, our weights and our biases to reach a, the lowest possible point on that bell curve. So we're starting up here and we're updating our parameters until we can't go any lower. That's what it's doing. And in order to do this, we pass in our model parameters, of course, because we're keeping track of our parameters and updating them in here, and our learning rate. The learning rate is simply just how far it advances per iteration on that bell curve. So if you had a high learning rate, it would jump from here to maybe here to here to here to here, and then you'd have like, you know, you would go way past that local bottom. But if you set a lower learning rate, then you would actually take little steps. So it would take you a lot longer to get there. But once you've once you've had enough iterations, you're essentially you've you've essentially hit the best point or the local bottom in your model. So you're going. And then you fit the bottom in like maybe a hundred or a thousand iterations. Cool. Let's move on now. We got a, we got all this in, we got our importations. We've got a model class with a constructor and a forward pass. We've created a model instance. We've gotten our loss generator. We've gotten our optimizer in place. Now what's next? Well, let's go ahead and just make some sample inputs. So torch.ran is going to make a, uh, a five by one matrix. You don't need to know what that is. Uh, essentially, this is just our input. And the type of this is a torch.float32. So what exactly is a float32? Maybe you've never seen that before. So a floating point number is just, or a float, is just a decimal number. Simple as that. A float and decimal number are used interchangeably all the time. And then this 32 is just how many bits it occupies uh, on your on your uh, computer. So if you have a float 32, that means it's occupying 32 bits. It has 32 bit precision. It has more decimal places because it can store more about the number. Whereas if you had say a float 16, it would only be able to store half as, half as much information or a, a significantly less decimal places. So instead of having like a 19 decimal place long number, you would have maybe like a 10 decimal place long number, or maybe like an, an eight decimal place long number. Um, but classically, we would use a float 32, so I'm just gonna stick with the basics. Uh, but that's a little background on why we use this data type here. Next up, we have this factor of two. So this is just what we're multiplying the inputs by. We have this random floating point matrix that's shaped five by one, and we're gonna multiply all the numbers in it by two. So. Our targets are equal to the inputs times the factor. Makes sense. Now what? This is gonna be the final stage of our model. Or not even our model, just the entire script itself. So let me copy and paste this here. Oh, didn't quite finish that. Awesome. So this is what we call a training loop. The training loop is going to update our model according to what inputs are correct or what outputs are correct and which are less correct. So we're just gonna essentially do a bunch of training iterations or epochs, that's what this is, epochs, and we're gonna do a thousand of those. So what actually happens in here step-by-step? Step? Well, our outputs are gonna be calculated from this model, which is this model class dot forward and we're going to pass in some inputs, meaning these. This forward is going to receive the input, we're going to get an output and return that. And that's gonna be what our outputs are. And then we're going to use the MSE or mean squared error loss. And we're gonna compare our outputs to our desired outputs or the targets, which was what this was calculated here. 
And once we have this loss, uh, we can actually begin to update our model. So this next tricky part here, optimizer.zero grad. We're essentially doing zero grad or zero gradient accumulation on the optimizer. So by default, PyTorch will accumulate gradients. And this is, this is a best practice. You don't need to understand uh, like what exactly this does. If you're a beginner, just know that this is a best practice and this is what we use in training loops uh, pretty much all the time. Uh, so optimizer.zero grad is essentially making sure that our gradient is only from the current iteration and not accumulated from the ones before. Because we don't care about those. Those ones were already taken care of. We only worry about the current one right now. There are some use cases where you would want to actually accumulate gradients, but that's for more complex modeling and we're not worried about that right now. So anyways, that's what zero grad does. Just a best practice. Uh, next up, loss.backward. So this is the reverse of our forward pass. It's our loss backward pass. So we're just backward propagating, if you will, through the network. Uh, and then given the gradients that we get from that, we're able to update our model parameters through optimizer.step. So optimizer.step is essentially just applying that learning rate with um, gradient descent here or stochastic gradient descent. And we're getting better model parameters that are best suited to uh, figuring out what this factor is. And then uh, each iteration, we could just uh, see if, uh, or rather, we check if the epoch divided by 100 has a remainder of zero. So that means every 100 iterations, we will do what's inside of this if statement, which is to print um, the current epoch and the corresponding loss for it. So let's go ahead and run this here. So if I just go to my anaconda prompt, here it is. Awesome. So I could just go python main.py and awesome. So that initial little part there was just uh, essentially importing PyTorch. And that takes a little while because PyTorch is quite big. There's a lot of things that it has to actually load in and consider. So that's why it took a little bit of a a, uh, a little while at the start. But we can see that this training loop works. We start off with some uh, some wild predictions giving us a loss of almost 1.2 and then it's going all the way down uh, all the way to uh, epoch number 900 where we're getting a loss of uh, 0 0.04 which is really good. That means the model has effectively solved this and uh, it has effectively figured out the factor. We've gotten really close to it and then if we change this to say 10,000, and then we were to run the same. So we can see that we go all the way from a loss of 6.1. And then we actually are, I don't even know what is happening, but it, it seems to have figured out something's already going on. So PyTorch has already figured out essentially what this factor is. Uh, all the way through all the way to epoch uh, number 100 but it just it keeps getting better until it's like you know very little of amount away from this uh, expected or desired output figuring out this factor so that's how you build a neural network from scratch